at the psychedelic dose level of these mushrooms, you get uh, a very important quality. In fact, the centrally important quality for my argument, which any of you who have ever taken these things have experienced yourselves, and that's what I call boundary dissolution. And here's the, here's the notion in a nutshell. When you look back through the primate phylogeny, clear back to the primitive primates, the squirrel monkeys and, and those sorts of animals, there are always what are called male dominance hierarchies. There's an alpha male animal who, uh, through brute force usually, takes the most desirable females under his command and sets his lieutenants over the his male lieutenants over the rest of the females and this is how these monkey uh, societies uh, order themselves well because psilocybin is a boundary dissolving uh, uh, hallucinogen and because the essence of ego consciousness which is necessary for these boundary hierarchies um, and for these dominance hierarchies the essence of ego is boundary definition so what I'm actually suggesting in this book is that we self-medicated ourselves into a state of gender equality and partnership consciously or unconsciously by allowing this item in our diet which suppressed ego and hence suppressed male dominance hierarchies. And so the ordinary momentum of primate evolution was interrupted. And for a period of about, who knows, pick a number, somewhere between 15 and 50,000 years, uh, ending about 10,000 years ago, we actually lived in a kind of paradise where human beings were at equilibrium and in balance with the earth, where men and women were in balance with each other. And I should have mentioned uh, this sexual arousal which went along with the, with the mushroom taking promoted a style of orgy probably at festivals which were lunar at the new and full moon everybody basically just jumped each other's bones in a big heap <laughs> and the social consequence of orgy as a social style is that it makes it impossible for men to trace lines of male paternity this is very important there is in a society which practices orgy no concept for men of my children there is only the concept of our children meaning the tribe the group so male loyalty goes toward the group and this is very important because once men discovered male paternity they discovered ownership of hunting grounds, food supplies, women, you name it. And it, it tended to feed back into the formation of the ego structure. Well, and, and so I believe that really that was the golden age of humanity that we all long for and, and have a great poignancy for that has even been called the nostalgia for paradise. I believe we have this nostalgia for paradise because we are the victims of a fall. You see, what happened was this African grassland environment, which was necessary for the uh, ecology of the mushrooms and therefore necessary to maintain this partnership paradise, Eventually it all dried up. The Sahara turned to desert. These people were forced out of Africa into the ancient Middle East and we fell into history. And, 
at this is the moment at which agriculture was invented agriculture because you have to stay in one place and tend the crops and defend the surplus of these successful agricultural efforts means the end to nomadism it means the birth of cities it means uh, the creation through surpluses of classes of those who have and those who have not it promotes kingship it creates the need for standing armies you can tell the drift here all the institutions that we associate with male oppression with hierarchy with dominance come into play at that point so uh, my uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this uh, but just in a nutshell that situation is the situation in which we were born and came to consciousness the paradisical situation of gender partnership that then dissolved it was really a return back to the earlier primate style of male dominance and hierarchy when the mushroom was no longer available we returned to our old monkey ways and we have been practicing those monkey ways ever since even as we reach toward the sequencing of the human genome the exploration of the solar system the exploration of the heart of matter nevertheless we do it from a psychologically damaged perspective now the question of drugs why as a species are we so obsessed and so addictable to so many things there are a few animals who will break into a compound for fermented fruit or something like that but we addict to dozens of substances and behaviors well I believe that you can make an analogy to uh, uh, a person who was abused or traumatized as a child the entirety of human history has been acted out in the light of the traumatic uh, severing of our connection into the Gaian mother goddess planetary matrix of organic wholeness that was the centerpiece of the psychedelic experience back in the high paleolithic in other words the the world of hallucination and vision that psilocybin carries you into is not your private unconscious or the architecture of your neural programming but it is in fact uh, a kind of intellecty a kind of being a kind of Gaian mind for paleolithic human beings it was the great goddess once you sever from this matrix of meaning what James Joyce called the mama matrix most mysterious once you sever yourself from that then you have nothing but rationalism ego and male uh, dominance to guide you and that's what has led us into the nightmarish labyrinth of technical civilization overpopulation classism racism sexism propaganda so forth and so on all the ills of modernity so I wrote this book making this argument because I believe that if we could import into straight society almost as a Trojan horse the idea that these psychedelic compounds and plants are not aberrational they are not pathological they are not some minor subset of the impossibility that only freaks and weirdos become involved with but rather they are in fact the catalyst that called forth humanness out of animal nature if we could uh, entertain this as a possibility it would change the way we think about 
so-called primitive societies, shamanism, the psychedelic experience, society's uh, uh, efforts to control and eradicate these substances. And I believe that we are really in a race on this planet now between education and disaster. And it is the, the momentum of the ego that threatens to shove us over the cliff into Armageddon. Famine, overpopulation, uh, you can kiss goodbye to democratic values. We are all going to live in an Orwellian anthill if we don't, what? Change our minds. We have to change our minds on, the, on a dime. I'm not talking about a 500-year program to uh, slowly straighten things out. We have, I believe, less than 30 years to come to terms with the dissolving ozone hole, the toxification of the oceans, the greenhouse effect, the spread of epidemic disease, the rise of fascism, the relentless efforts of the free marketeers to deal products in every corner of the planet. We must change our minds. And what we have to do is have recourse to these same uh, uh, shamanic plants and shamanic practices that allowed our remote ancestors to come to terms with the mystery of being and their situation on this planet vis-a-vis -vis, vis -vis the rest of nature. So I, I think it's very important at this time to make this argument as clearly as possible, to launch the idea into society and let, uh, let argument and debate rage. Now, you may think that I'm proposing blowing up some already existing edifice of theory about how human beings came to be. This is not the case. As a matter of fact, orthodox anthropology hasn't a clue. We are the, the, the fly in the soup of natural science's explanation of the evolution of species. It's easy to understand how one kind of hummingbird emerges from another. It's not very easy to understand how creatures that build something like Los Angeles can emerge out of creatures who hunt ants by sticking grass stems down their holes, you know. We represent some kind of primary break with nature uh, at the animal level. And I believe it's because we have a symbiotic relationship with all of nature. We are wired for this. There are, are uh, drug receptors in our brains, in our physical brains, that have been carried along for a thousand generations without really being called into use. But now is the time. If we really believe that these things expand consciousness, then we must study them, use them, apply them, because it's the absence of consciousness that is uh, creating a, 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 a terminal crisis, not only for us as a species, but for every living thing on this planet. And I think the psychedelic experience is a, as much a part of being alive as sexuality, language, uh, uh, the things which fulfill us and give meaning to the human experience are left incomplete and impossible to assimilate if we don't place the capstone on the edifice of our being in the world. And the capstone on that edifice is our right, our uh, obligation, and the privilege of dissolving our, our ordinary ego boundaries and merging with the mind and purpose of the planet. And this is what I was trying to say in the book, and this is what uh, uh, I hope I'm able to communicate to you this evening.
Thank you very much.